everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin. That's Jill. That's you hello, at home hello. watching us live, doing all the things we're doing. We got a not a ton of stuff to talk about this week because this is just stuff we find interesting. No, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I know. You might not There's like it, cool but things. we like it, so we're going to talk about it. You're going to have to deal with it. Jill, you um, got infected by the plague. Yeah, so it, excuse my voice if I sound a little funny. Yeah, I've been under the weather. I can make the last you sound funny. Days. You want to sound funny? <laughs> oh, that, that, that's true. You have that power. <laughs> you can make me echo, and you can make me sound like a guy. <laughs> I can do pitch correction. We can do it live too. I mean, I do it throughout yeah. the entire show. <laughs> That actually might be interesting, <laughs> but I, I I did have fun this last weekend. I had one of the Linux chicks of Los Angeles over. We had a great time catching up and uh, talking about our Linux chicks LA booth um, that we have at Skill every year, except for when there's a pandemic. But this year, Skill, the Southern California Linux Expo is back, 19x, and it's coming July 28th through the 31st. So I'm starting to prepare for that, which is always exciting and a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. And this was actually the first time I had seen one of my Linux chicks of LA uh, girls in IRL since the pandemic. So that was really awesome. We've been, you know, constantly talking to each other on social medias and on Jitsi and whatnot. You see what you get? You get the plague, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I got the plague, <laughs> the plague of uh, social interaction. <laughs> oh no. man, that is coming up though. July is next month, barely. Yeah. I mean, effectively, yeah, we're a couple of days out in June. Yeah, we that's going to be interesting. Seeing a bunch of people getting back together. Looking forward yeah. to that. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's a free bit of advice. This is what you get. Here's your bonus thing. If you are in the states. And you happen to have charter communications. You haven't gotten an email about this. And something you might not know is if you, I don't think it, it's going to affect me on business plan because we got a speed bump like last year sometime. But if you're on like a 100, 200, uh, 400 megabit plans, reset your modem. You should have an extra 100 megabits there. That is something that's getting rolled out. And uh, very nice. But, yeah. I don't even know. If, I know from another tech and another tech is like, yeah, this is done. Do it. And uh, a lot of people have done it and they're like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, free that's, stuff. Yeah. That's nice. When I had had cable, they would do that every once in a while, like roll every six months or a year, roll out a little um, higher uh, bandwidth, but not so true with fiber <laughs> fiber. You know, I'm a gigabit and it'll stay a gigabit unless I pay them more. <laughs> so. well. I mean, you get uh, 2.5 and 5 gigabit options. Yeah. (laughs) That's kind of fun. And Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so if you're in the States and you happen to have charter communications or spectrum, whatever they're called in your area, cycle your modem to a speed test and hey, find out. I mean, you're not going to pay anything extra for it yet. And um, (laughs) the other thing I've been up to is I was talking about the Behringer UV1 last week and uh, we're making progress. getting the kernel driver set up for it so nice. that's kind of an adventure having to do some reclocking things that well like phase one is doing some reclocking things from that with the behringer 404 and stuff like that trying to get an idea where it's at and i'm trying to get a hold of behringer which is always a fun thing because mm-hmm. they will do everything possible not to talk to a human being which is interesting because i need to confirm something on the board and um yeah, I happen to have the device, and we're going back and forward, so we got a thing opened in the kernel thing, and hopefully it'll get, I know science terms, right, kernel thing, pushed out to uh, Linux next, um, maybe a week after next, or whatever, to get it up and running under Linux. So here's your like fair warning. If you're planning on buying one, which I don't even know if they're generally available, hold off until everything's 100% on that. There you go. Mm, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Outside of that, I've been killing zombies. <laughs> yeah, cool <laughs> and racing racing or doing time trials and track mania as we have we been did that. every week yeah <laughs> i think uh let's see i don't i don't think i had the best time out of anybody this week joe you yeah. did pretty good in a couple of tracks too yeah 
yeah, I did. I did get get uh, through the final go- goal before some other people did, but then their speeds got better than mine. But I, I'm used to that. <laughs> better and better each and every I week. Win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes uh, I win. <laughs> I can draw the direct correlation because you can't lie your way through track mania. You, I can look each and every week. Yeah, I who practice. put the most time in mm-hmm. and go. That's going to be the letterboard come Friday. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what we do, we play um, the much unloved version of Trackmania, Trackmania Squared Stadium. Why? Because it runs on anything and it's super cheap. And it mm-hmm. runs on Linux. Just smash that Proton button, fam. We have our own server, which does run on Linux, which is nice. A little private server that we set up and we throw in new tracks each and every week just because we like physics platforming. You know, if you like super realistic, fake racing probably not your thing but if you like arcade racing or if you just like platforming with some physics throw it in mm-hmm. maybe come check it out all that information is in our discord it's open for twitch subs and um patrons just uh link that to your account to get into our discord consider that like uh, a litmus test because man i had somebody blow me up on um if you're listening man i'm sorry but mm-hmm. They asked, uh, you remember that mage well? I still have that mage well at like $900 quad capture card. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I had like the first version, which just had, you know, because it's commercial equipment, it's just got that buzz saw fan in it where you can hear it three houses over, just 100% no fan control <laughs> on it. And part of that video I did for setting up on Linux was doing a fan hack and, you know, clipping that out and setting it up so you can control it with your motherboard. And I get a comment on that video, I think last week, early last week. It's like, hey, could you list the parts? And I'm like, well, yeah, I did. In the description of the that should have been my first clue. Just leave mm-hmm. it alone. But mm-hmm. just trying to be nice. Like I did. Just a flood of a that that was the oh, lead wow. in that was the lead in question, Jill. That was like Okay. Can I oh, <laughs> now I have your attention. I this and what I didn't write back, what I should have wrote back. I'm like why are you in charge of this piece of hardware? You shouldn't be. Because it was very... Like, how do I cut the cable? And I'm like, no, don't, don't, don't give this to somebody else. You ever run into those situations? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Where somebody's aspiration does not meet their current ability. Mm-hmm. And uh, they didn't start with the simple stuff. They got some really expensive equipment. You're like, that's probably not where you want to start off playing. Yeah. <laughs> You probably want to get some a little cheaper. It's not going to hurt as much uh, when you break it. But there we are. And one of the questions was like, how do I get in Discord? And I'm like, you know what? If you figure this out, if you figure this out, I'll walk you through it with mm-hmm. everything else. But I'm not going to tell you because it was like, do you have a Discord? Like, not touching it, Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you can figure that out, we'll continue this conversation. Ah, there we are. Now. Mm-hmm. Something we talked about in the pre-show is uh, Pine devices, Pine 64. Yeah. They've always been mm-hmm. reasonable, like not even reasonable, they've been very affordable, like within the, you know, $100, $200 range, something that yeah. you could look, or the Pine Time, right? Yeah. The Pine Time, you know, 30 bucks. Uh, the Pine Book, $100. They're great. And you got to give Jill credit because it only took, like maybe three seconds and Jill was like, I know where my pine time is. Most people yeah. can't say that. <laughs> Why? Because the pine time is like 30 bucks, 15 dollars, something like that. You buy it like, that's neat. Where's that? No idea. <laughs> real, real conversations <laughs> I've had with people. But somebody, I don't think Arthur and he threw this into the show suggestions yeah. section. Uh, two years of life. With a pine phone. And I was kind of interested to read this because somebody took the Pepsi challenge with this. And then somebody was Peter. Mm-hmm. And he kind of walks through this and it's pretty interesting. I mean, it is with you know, the early impressions and like, I don't know if it's going to be any good. And it, it really does start off like you would expect uh, a pine phone experience if you knew that, hey, this is kind of like development hardware. And he kind of walks through the initial neat factor. What happens when that wears off and you have Mm -hmm. to deal with reality things like the seven hours of idle battery life not good and uh you know later on crust firmware came along really helped out the battery life problem is is like 
Most of the time, the phone won't be able to come out of hibernation quick enough to answer a call. So, mm. Mm. yeah. And, you know, later on, we talked about this, uh, the community editions were axed, and that took a little bit of the fun out of it, right? Yeah. Like, oh, we don't have all these crazy little spins going on. And, um, you know, but it's 2022. And he's kind of walks through, uh, you know, things have kind of smoothed out, you know. He even wrote this using a spine phone. And you can do things like process the words, browse the webs on the OG Pied phone. It's kind of stable mm-hmm. now, which is good, but he's like, it's very slow. Just be prepared to be able to take breaks when you're trying to get things done. And <laughs> launching Firefox. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A slow. Yeah. Like start it and go do something else. Come back. But if mm-hmm. you're, if you're aware of the, but what you paid for it, you bought a Tinker device and you know, I'm going to say in 2022, my answer to should you buy a Pied phone is the same as it was on release. You know, I, I completely agree with this. Um, if you want something inexpensive, to tinker with absolutely i still think it's a great you know it's it's the raspberry pi of mobile computing with, yeah you know absolutely maybe yeah i definitely think think that's that's true and what is what is cool is that peter said he wrote this on his pine phone this article so i was thinking it's probably with the attached pine phone keyboard or an external bluetooth keyboard but yeah, what I thought was interesting in the article is he talked about when the community d- editions um, stopped being released, the interest went down, at least within the communications of the, the forms and the questions. And that, that's something to think about, I think, for, for Pine64 to maybe every once in a while, you know, promote one of the OSs. Um, they're using because I think it really helps with publicity or uh, do some new community additions, possibly. Mm. I'm mm. going to tell you what everyone's going to say to that, Jill. I'm Aww. going to tell you. <laughs> it depends on how you look at it because me and you were looking at it and you're like, yeah, let's get the community involved. Let's have a bunch of like different options, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think they're looking at it as sustainability long term if we're going to actually develop a cohesive ecosystem we got to yeah. get everybody on the same page this is one and that's when they chose manjaro yeah that doesn't gel with a lot of the linux yeah. crowd when you say no, we can only <laughs> use this one distribution it's all about choice true but do you ever want to get a linux phone but i mean you can install what you want but mm-hmm. I, I can understand why they want to focus all development and efforts and uh one thing i get it yeah and absolutely. nothing's stopping anybody from doing their own versions and own spins i mean th- those aren't acts they're just not official in any capacity anymore mm-hmm. i'll again if anybody from pine is listening which i know they occasionally do because you hit me up on twitter when i mess up things when i miss <laughs> yeah <laughs> hear me now yes release me uh, like a halfway decent tablet and like halfway decent tablet you know it can be an older cortex design but at least put a 1080p mm. dis- yeah 1080p display capacitive four gigs of ram preferably a 300 dollars price point i'll buy one now unfortunately you might be like well we sold one <laughs> then kept his word that might be a bad idea but- <laughs> yeah and i'm i'm very interested uh, i think when is it next week or the upcoming weeks they're gonna announce more details on the risk five board mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting like risk is yeah that's neat. exciting yeah yeah. So, yeah and pine has always had their own little soc board but it's it's really nice to see them expanding and yeah they got some rock chip arm stuff yeah yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> man we need more because you just cannot get a raspberry pi right now but Yeah, (laughs) but Pine is brilliant. Their big problem right now is hardware shortages. So that that's the unfortunate thing. But I know they're you know working on new product, and I'm sure there's going to be another iteration of the Pine Phone. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I I mean, they were able to do the Pine Pro. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you? Where do you go? Like, (laughs) come on, Pine, call it the Pine More Pro. (laughs) Pine More Pro. Pine. (laughs) Pine Pro uh, squared. Yeah. Pine Pro 2. Pine Pro 2. But yeah. Uh, square it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like Trackmania does. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, that's a common question when people <laughs> first start asking, like poking around, like, what are you guys doing having fun on Tuesdays and Fridays? Why is it squared? I'm like, I don't know. Just play it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and they do make installing all the different OSs really easy. Even even Loon OS is on there, which I'm very happy. That's the open web OS for those of you that don't know. And mm. I have ran that before. Um, actually, I, I do have it installed in, on one of my phones. And uh, it's nice to see the development. And because of that, those projects are getting better because of the Pine Phone, Pine phone obviously. <laughs> those are getting better. <laughs> well, here's to Peter, who yeah. took the Pepsi Challenge. Two-year drive mm-hmm. with something that I would have no interest. I mean, again, that would be... For me, that would be the equivalent of, I'm not knocking the Pine Phone up because I'm like, hey, get the Pine Phone, play with it, have fun with it, development platform, good tinker device. But that would be like, you're going to use this Raspberry Pi 4 as your only computer for two years. And yeah. once I was done laughing at you, I would kindly ask you to leave. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent, good reporting. And yeah, very fair conclusion. I look forward yeah. to more stuff from the Pine crew. I Absolutely. do. Rust mm-hmm. in the Linux kernel is going to happen, no matter um, yeah. how much you uh, purist don't want it. It's coming. Oh, this is so exciting. It's something a lot of us in the Linux community have really been uh, anticipating. So Linus Torvald says, yes, Rust is coming to the Linux kernel. And he said, really soon. Um, he talked at the Linux Foundation's Open Source Summit in Austin, Texas on Tuesday, the 21st of June. And he said he expects support for Rust code in the Linux kernel to be merged soon, possibly with the next release, 5.20. So cool. This is just so awesome. And, you know, we've actually been here on LWW. We covered this awesome news when it broke the beginning of last year. And in December, we talked about a patch that added support for Rust as a second language for the Linux kernel code. And it's, this is just very, very exciting because, uh, for one thing, Rust in- integration in Linux kernel would lead to better security and stability. And having memory managed drivers that Rust offers is a great idea and it incre- increase the speed of the OS tremendously. And, you know, Linus himself, himself, of course, knows all the benefits that Rust can bring and he's, and he's very excited about it. I think he's excited and like he'll allow it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, That's that, that kind of nice the take that... I've been getting from Light. Is he's like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, he had said in the in the article, he had in the interview at the Open Source Summit, he had, he had said that you know it wouldn't be too hard to integrate it. They they've tried before with other languages. And he didn't think that this one would be uh, too hard a process. Yeah. So that was a good sign. Least of the worst. I mean, it's... yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything against Rust. Um, I do tangle with Rust on occasion, especially with the um, also Sound Fireware and Proof uh, stack that TAC works on. That is really where I like, okay, what is this? Cargo. Okay. All right. This is how this works. Rust is still slow, but. Good at sandboxing. (laughs) It it has its upsides. I'll say that. And um, I mean, if that's how we got to roll with it, that's how we got to roll with it. This comes from the register and Mm -hmm. all of this is going to be in our show notes. All I'll say is register. I saw this. I'm looking at the photo. This is Linus um, with Dirk uh, on the stage. It's like, what did you shoot this with a pine phone? Yeah. (laughs) I know. <laughs> it is a uh, heavily a compressed image. Yeah. artifacts. It looks like there's color banding in it. Like um, it looks rough, and like no, that's it's fine image. Yeah. Oh, I had a great time when I saw. I got to talk to Linus at the Look at that Summit young man in 2017, and he looked younger in 2017 than he does he now. Was. Yeah, he was. But he's so cool. Oh man, uh, pocket PCs. Yeah, this is exciting, Ben. <laughs> uh, you know what? Kinda. And I'm gonna say kinda because what I was more interested in is the pr- 
precursor to this. Now, we're about mm-hmm. to talk about the MNT pocket reform. And you know what? The biggest feature of this is it's going to be available in purple. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I'm excited I, about that. <laughs> This is it. It's small. It's little. There's no pricing details whatsoever. And uh, let's see how poorly Photoshopped. Well, it's a 3D render, so come on. It is a 3D render, and I actually did a pretty nice job on it. Well, okay. No pricing data. Uh, It's uh, M&T says it's going to go into an early beta program with dev kits coming soon, trademarked. What is it? Cortex A53. You know what? That was a really nice uh, bitty kit back in like 2012, 2015, whenever it was released. But it's small, it's tiny. Jill will tell you about that. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a baby version of the Reform laptop. And their laptop goes for about 1.5K, fully kitted out, about 12K. Not yeah. uh, 1.5, yeah, $1.5,000 um, or $1,200 if you just want the build your own kit, which... You know, that's the first thing I look into when I see something like this. Have you shipped product before? Because shipping the product is the hardest thing yeah. out of all of it. But seven-inch display and all that. Here's what I wanted to bring up, Joe. Here's what yeah. I wanted to bring up. Um, Because we're going to talk about the little mini version. And do, do you like purple? Yeah, I love purple. What about wood gray? Oh, yeah. I like that one, too. That was... uh. Yeah, that the um, there was another article that we have in our, our show notes, and someone was saying, "Oh, they'd love to see the wood grain one uh, be a real thing." <laughs> this is what got me a little more excited because everyone knows about the um, oh, mm-hmm. what is the name of the laptop that Lewis has and Linus is invested in. Um, uh, it's basic. <laughs> uh, we know it. <laughs> we just both forgot. Thank you, Katana. We're kidding. Framework. They were, oh, the, the framework modular laptop. Yes. So they got their own take on this. They got, look at that. <laughs> Those look like 18650s. They could be um, 1820. Uh, but they have their own modular laptop as well, which I'd never heard about. And I'm sure somebody's going to go back and go, you've talked about it. I'm like, maybe. I just yeah. wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. But you can buy this as a multi-piece kit, and it's got all the things. That, now, we're going to talk about a little itsy bitsy one, actually. Jill's going to go to a lot more detail. I just want to give this a plug. Now, it's not exactly a light, super slim mm-hmm. one. It's pretty light, but I thought this was kind of neat. I mean, this is, oh, look, there's a little prototype. Uh, yeah. So basically, Jill, what they're making is a mm-hmm. production version of the initial prototype of their yeah laptop. Huh. Look at they even have ones with uh, colors and designs. Right. It's so cool. And so, back to the pocket, Jill. I'm gonna tell you about it. Yeah. So my first thought was, I want that a beautiful mini laptop in purple. In fact, a, a lot of the computers in my collection, uh, one of my favorite things are my mini laptops and unique laptops. And what's cool about this one is it has an open source trackball. And that is just so cool because trackballs are so much better than touchpads to me. So tired of all these closed source trackballs. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And it has an ortholinear mechanical keyboard, which is very impressive. And it's it has open hardware and open software. It's sustainable and takes a standard replaceable battery. That that is awesome, and um, I actually subscribe to the Pocket Reform News to get updates on this little device because I want one really bad. <laughs> and Ven, do you know what OS is this little Pocket Reform supports? It's it's Selfish. actually amazing. <laughs> that wasn't on the list, but but I'm sure it would work. So. Of course, Debian, GNU Linux, yeah. support for Arch that. and Ubuntu and Void Linux. For the kids. All right. And the Plan 9 Unix operating system. I thought that was really awesome. And on, honestly, that takes some feat to get Plan 9 launching on hardware. Can you, can you imagine looking at a little <laughs> mobile device like this and you're like, this thing's practically useless. And somebody kicks in the door and is like, we can go deeper. Aww. 
But Plan 9 was so ahead of its time in, in terms of uh, sharing um, a networked hardware from one computer to the next. Like you could, you could send from one computer, you could play sound and send that device's drivers to another computer, which would play the sound. Just really, really ahead of its time. I, re- I remember seeing a demo of it years ago and was so impressed. <laughs> yeah, BOS. I'd be done with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to run, I mean, on technical <laughs> feet, if you want, I'm not knocking on Plan 9 fan humans at all. It's yeah. Just, when, you, when you talk about an OS, it's like, can I do work with it? Like, well, listen, yeah. come on. It, it's really neat, though. Look at this networking thing. It can, like, uh, can I check my email? Uh, well, okay. Okay. Don't don't get too hasty. Oh, uh, and as my Steve has been said in, ch- in chat, isn't that from outer space? Plan 9 <laughs> from outer space. And yes, it was named after <laughs> Plan 9 from outer space. I posted a kind of interesting thing in um, Discord. It might have been a week before last that the initial Plan 9 distribution disc that they were going to push out was going to have um, like a bunch of custom songs and not MP3s. It was a different mm. format that they'd come up with uh, that was like writing next to MP3 at the time. They were going to push out all the Plan 9 stuff too. But at and yeah. lawyers shut it down and they're like, and, oh. I'll have to find it. I'll post it again back at our Discord because this ends with like a very long thing from one of the engineers. And like, this is why MP3 became the default standard for music mm. encoding like ha huh, interesting ways interesting. yeah things yeah. get tied together so the pocket reform also supports the gnode operating system as well as open bsd so a very diverse uh, a platform it's really awesome i don't know jill it's got to do more obscure stuff i've heard of all these operating systems yeah <laughs> but yeah it's good Lots of cool stuff. Oh, it's got also um, uh, the uh, not just Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but mm-hmm. you can you can access cellular as well with it. I should point out the yeah. um, Wi-Fi stack and Bluetooth stacks open source. There's no mm-hmm. like blobby stuff. Yeah. The only thing I can take issue with, like legitimately, is it's too small for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. But this this keyboard does look. It's it's really good for a seven inch. You know, laptop keyboard. I would have to use it's this really to nice. use a keyboard that's small. Well. Yeah, that, that is true. Okay, well, like I have no problem with my um, uh, my original EPC, but I have small hands, so <laughs> I never had a problem with it. I just found more entertaining trying to use it. Yeah, <laughs> I thumb typed on it, kind of tried to, but I don't know. Um, trackballs trackballs back on laptops how vintage yeah no it's so cool i i've always loved the trackball for laptops it was so precise and i found it really quick and easy i like the old dells when they had them and old old think pads it's really nice <laughs> i don't um <laughs> you, you don't well no. the reason they they put a trackball is for obviously for space they want to keep this as small as possible but they could have used the nubbin which i can't stand but instead, they chose to use a trackball. So, you know what? You gotta you gotta give credit to the um, little nipple <laughs> from IBM because that taught yeah. an entire generation that you could plug a mouse into a laptop. Yeah, that like, that is man. true. That is true. It just drove I I never liked it because I'm well, partly it's because I'm <laughs> visually challenged. So, <laughs> and it was hard. Yeah, it was just hard for me to do it. Use it. <laughs> the um. Yeah, the only thing I think about when I see a trackball on a laptop is like, how easy is that to clean out? Because trackballs <laughs> get nasty. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They can. Just like the, the mouse ball. In the well, old I mean, it's not like you're nasty. It's uh, You want to see a collection of dead skin? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> ben. Use a trackball. I'm sorry. I mean, this is universal with trackballs. If you've ever used a trackball of any type, make, shame, or function, you pop and the ben ball And knows because he uses a trackball. Yeah. Even right now. This is a, that stuff that, that's not dirt. That's skin. Ugh. Yeah. But you know what? That's what dust is made of, kids. You're wiping the dust up in your house. That's pretty much all that skin cells. So keep that in mind what i'm saying is don't taste it uh 
you might get superpowers. If you get superpowers, send me an email. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. We got one little bit of Raspberry Pi stuff to get through, but we have not one, but two patrons we need to yeah. thank this week. And speaking of patrons, we got, if you want to uh, help us out, you can yeah. do that at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got all the information over at linuxgamecast.com. Post everything. We host all of our stuff, all of our own content. You don't have to worry about being tracked or um, stored or anything like that. And that helps out with the hosting and everything else that we do. We got a support thing. We got Patreon. We got merch. We got PayPal. We got wish list. And uh, mm-hmm. even crypto cryptocurrency is not worth anything. Send us uh, your crypto, and I'll immediately convert it to studio equipment. Speaking of equipment, Jill's even mm-hmm. got a wish list. If you want to see some nauseatingly RGB things, and let's yeah. visit our good friend Kingston Two Forty <laughs> GB, who's been on that wish list forever. <laughs> It has been. I use those in my old laptops and old computers <laughs> to speed them up and replace the And AD of course, <laughs> I got one for the studio, which yeah. is full of uh, wicked, uh, <laughs> wicked, yeah, uh, pretty much wicked expensive stuff. But you'll get your name on the board back here if you want to help us enable cheat mode for that. And uh, Frank's undying gratitude because Frank's undead. It rolls like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Two people we need to thank, Jill Bryan. Yeah, so we need to thank Rilch. She's a new patron that joined us on Linux Gamecast Weekly last Saturday. And that was, I had fun chatting with them while the show was going on. That was cool. <laughs> thank you so much, Rilch. And System T increased his uh, Patreon pledge. Thank you, System T. He's been around for years. We love System T. That's always awesome. I love seeing mm-hmm. that. And, uh, Take advantage of the bonus stuff. We do an extra hour of content each and every week in podcast and video form, pre pre super shows. And if you're always wondering, like, you know, what we're doing behind the scenes or just in life in general, like, hey, what are we watching? That's usually what the show starts out like. So, did you watch um, the boys? If you're wondering where the boys recaps are, kind of in places like that and um, pre pre super shows. And that's another thing mm-hmm. that, well, we just like to do. And we hope you enjoy it. But if that's not your thing, if you just need some tech content, like long form, chunky stuff, we have the live and uncut series in your custom RSS feed on Patreon. So uh, Patreon, I don't like saying Patreon, but you know what I mean. <laughs> live and uncut series. You look at a show like this, this is going to be like 25, 30 minute long show, but there's usually like an hour, an hour and a half in the live stream. So clean the audio up, put it in MP3, but also give you the full video as well. And it's good for like three and a half, four hours of content. For Linux Gamecast Weekly, which we do each and every Saturday, we've been doing that for uh, mm-hmm. a decade now. Ten years. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Can you tell we showed up just in time for this Steam Deck thing? We're trying to capitalize on Linux gaming. <laughs> Not really. But it is cute. Nye, it's a little bit adorable to see some of the people popping up out of the woodwork that are like, Linux is awesome. It's great. Isn't that da-? like you know, you know what you're talking about. But as long as they're not saying anything harmful, all publicity is good publicity for Linux. So be a, go out there. Be a good ambassador for it. Yeah. All right. Yay, so uh, mm-hmm. we're going to watch. Oh, that's like a, a, a great pie. Uh, um, CRT TV pie. Looks like it's Christmas time. <laughs> Full of bees. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, there's bees. bees. Aw, cute bees. Everything's better with bees. Yes, I yeah. love bees. <laughs> like refrigerators. Yeah. Full Aww. of bees. <laughs> I've actually seen that in old refrigerators. <laughs> well, I would be more disturbing if you haven't seen it in a new one. No one then. Yeah, <laughs> true. You're like, oh, that's what that button does. What? Bees. Yeah, bees and hornets. I've seen them. Oh, before. man. The hipsters are going to love this. Yeah, this is so cool. So this is a Raspberry Pi TV simulator, which you can make your streaming experience just like the analog TV experience of your of yesterday, <laughs> complete with the 720 by 486 NTSC analog broadcast resolution and the white static in snow. <laughs> this is so cool. And what's really cool is the battery compartment underneath the set actually made the perfect place to mount a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which takes care of streaming a variety of old movies and shorts. And what's really cool is the position of the original tuning potentiom- 
potentiometer is read by an Arduino Mini, which tells the Pi which channel you're currently tuned to. And then the composite video is fed from the Raspberry Pi's output right into the TV's video input. And I think what's so cool is the, I love the static and snow uh, between the channels when he flips the channels. It gives a realistic effect of watching an old, uh, you know, Popeye cartoon or Space 1999 or your favorite B-rated sci-fi movie. And Rodrigo, the developer and creator, actually used a relay switch um, with the TV tuners back into the... Uh, Rodrigo used a relay switch in the TV tuners back into the circuit for the short bit between channel changes to make the snow effect. Uh, I don't think that made sense. <laughs> Anyways, there is a uh, converter in there that uh, uh, short circuits the signal. So when you go from one channel to another, you get a snow effect. <laughs> but this is just a really cool device. And, uh, you know, I then I used to see this uh, five-inch portable black and white TV used Um used to actually be sold in all the drugstores from the 80s into the early TKs, you know, was in and was created by many different manufacturers, including Kobe. And I used to see it at Thrifties and Rite Aid and CVS and <laughs> all the drugstores as a cheap TV option. <laughs> so that was really cool. And I also have one um, in my eBay watch list. And I've actually had it there for quite some time, so I can use it bucks. with my, yeah, my vintage computers and VCRs. And yeah, I think it's like twenty dollars shipping. There hmm. are ones that are cheaper, but this one was, looked in good shape. <laughs> or you can put it on a shelf. <laughs> no, I actually um, did want it to hook up to some of my old uh, computers. Um, I've got a TV I specifically use for my C sixty fours and. My Amigas and such. and It's a five-inch display, man. Yeah, I like, know. But it's good for testing. I don't think I would be able to old read hardware. anything on that. No, I, I can't either. But it's good for testing old hardware. So For what? I wanted, I wanted one. Because I, I do, I actually use a big um, flat screen TV for testing my old uh, uh, computers. Uh, and um, But that's clumsy and I have to get it out of the garage and... It takes a lot of space, and this would be a nice way to just to touch, test that the computers are working. Powering on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I lived through these dark times. Yeah. <laughs> Static. Um, at least you had channels. We had four channels, so. And, but eventually we got satellite. Yeah. So. But even that, when I say satellite, you're thinking... Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, it was horrible. C-band dishes. You oh, had to remember boy. two sets. You had to remember the satellite. <laughs> and then every satellite had its own set of channels. So, like, sometimes going from the science channel or something like that to uh, MTV, when, like, a seven or eight-digit combination that you had to keep memorized, and you had to wait because the dish moved. Ah, uh, yeah. That's slow. It was a slow process. <laughs> uh, dark times. That's what, I, that's what these old TVs bring back to me black i don't think i've ever had no i don't think i ever had a black and white tv oh yeah no I, I did of like mm -hmm. you know picking one up to go oh look this one's black and white how novel in fact i grew up with a, a black and white tv my parents had bought me so i could have my own tv in my own room to watch the original star trek series so I had a black and white TV for years, and then we had the big, of course, 25-inch console color TV in the living room. <laughs> Isn't that like a weird thing to think about, big 25-inch? Yeah. yeah, I know. And that was the biggest TV at the time, and then they made a 27-inch after that. The um, Big but, enough to where it, <laughs> you, you built furniture around it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and sometimes you could even find uh, record players, you know, in the stereo system that was... Um, hidden on the top of the console when you lifted up the lid that that was cool <laughs> and those were the times but it's just so nice to see uh, a raspberry pi project with a crt monitor <laughs> that made me happy 
I think I'll, I'll just stick to watching YouTube on my monitor. And uh, when I click on a different video, Jill, I'll just go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, we should watch LWW on a CRT. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> no, nah, man, you you do you. I, 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 I'm going I'm to live in my immediate future. <laughs> All right. That's brilliant. Uh, if you got any thoughts, hints, allegations, go ahead, head over to LinuxGameCast.com and smash that contact button. We get those messages. And you know what? Tune in Saturday if you get a chance. Somebody left us, uh, if you listen to us on Spotify there's a, or Anchor, there's an option to leave a voicemail message. Somebody finally took us up on that. And that came in last week. Nice. But I didn't get a chance <laughs> to play it. So we're going to play it and find out what mysterious words of wisdom await us. Should be fun. All right, everyone. I'm going to bring up some music and we're going to roll out some credits, but awesome. have a great rest of your week. Aw, thank you for watching LWW 33 and a third. <laughs> That's what I'm going to have like to teach to you about maths one day. I know, I know. I was a little tongue tied today. <laughs> our advisors, Omegas and Artharon, our beautiful advisors, our executive producers, Barb Rant, Scott Emma, Atomic, Mike G, Empty. Our Chicago <laughs> people, Darkwing and Abstraction. <laughs> yeah, sea, sea Monsters. Nubbin, Renal, Hakeem, David, Tenuta, Justin. Our Death Notes. Nova, Gamatron, Dodger. There were more. There were more. How dare. I can't read them all that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. Oh, man. That's, a, that's a, not an even number, but... It's divisible by Linux. Yeah, just it like sure us. Is. Aww. We'll see you next week, everyone. Bye bye. Love you guys. <laughs>